uh, we're gonna do gin and spin a little different today. <laughs> First off, there's no gin, and uh, not that I don't want the gin, it's that it's like three in the afternoon. So uh, we're still gonna call it Gin and Spin Podcast because one, the name makes me happy, and I really like gin, so we're keeping it. But the general idea with Gin and Spin wasn't so much to watch me drink gin, but uh, I, I wanted something where it could be either me talking about what I'm spinning, or more importantly, I have all these great friends, and they're all on the internet for the most part, so I wanted to be able to interview people and just kind of like have conversations and hang out, thanks to technology. So uh, that's what's up. So today we're going to be uh, interviewing, so it, it basically it's a recorded conversation, not an interview. <laughs> today, join us as uh, Christina and I, my um, Crafty Housewife Yarns resident dye guru slash wizard, that's her official title, uh, will be hiding from our children because we're both moms. And that's also where the gin comes in, obviously, is... <laughs> We just wanted something that was laid back and casual and a good conversation. So we literally have both kicked our children out of the house and are filming ourselves spinning yarn and talking in weird random locations in our own houses. So uh, that's always fun. So this is some like 100% keeping it real, like work at home mom shit, like about to go down. So... <laughs> That's, like I said, I just, we're trying to, I have some other interviews lined up for Jen and Spin, and we kept trying to come up with a better way, so I really would love to know what you think. We've been doing them, like, live, as you know, <laughs> on YouTube, but with the idea that people could comment and it could be live, but then the problem with that was it's, like, me with my phone recording an iPad that I'm, like, uploading on a computer, so it was, you know, it was, it was kind of extra. So we're trying at this time with doing a screen recording of like a split screen sort of thing where hopefully it, you know, you can watch both of us spin. And uh, of course we still have awkward camera angles of me because you know, that's what, you know, it's my video if there's awkward camera angles of me. But Christina looks great. So yay, Christina. <laughs> and um, so that's how we're going to try it out. I would love to know what you think. So if you're seeing this on YouTube, then that means I have successfully spliced this intro with the recorded video like it's supposed to be and gotten it uploaded on YouTube. So you should congratulate me right there if I got that done. So hopefully that'll work, but that's kind of where we're going. So if this one turns out good and everybody likes it, I'm going to continue. Like I said, I've got some other guests lined up and this will kind of be our format going forward. So without further ado, hopefully here is uh, Christina Mossad and myself uh, hiding from children and making yarn. And today we're going to learn about uh, dyeing, of course, because I, anytime I get to talk to Christina, I always want to pick her brain on that. So let me know what you think and uh, like and subscribe and thumbs up and high five and whatever you're supposed to do on YouTube <laughs> so that other people can find this video. And if you have any questions, we kind of talk about a few things. Uh, our course, the Spin Your Own Yarn course, uh, Drop Spindling, um, the Merino Braid of the Month Club. If you have questions about any of those things and you're like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, comment and we will link you or answer them or something. Anyhow, toodaloo and uh, here's our interview. Braid done of Heidi, so I was like, all right, well, I better get another one. Okay, cool. I think we're actually recording. <laughs> so, yay. Well, for, and I'll do uh, an official introduction later, but uh, I didn't want to make this too rambly. I'm so glad we were able to finally do this. We've been talking about uh, doing a, I guess it's going to be a gin and spin, even though I don't have any gin at this point in the day, because it's like three in the afternoon, but... Uh, Water. Yeah, no, no water. I mean, gotta drink the water because I've been drinking the coffee, so I'm feeling all dehydrated. But what are what are you spinning on? Um, I'm spinning faux cashmere for one oh, of our, cocoon? I guess, corporate accounts, right? Ooh. One of our business accounts. <laughs> That's really pretty. And so tell everybody, so, we were experimenting, like I said, from behind the scenes. We've gotten some different, when we say faux cashmere, it's a, uh, it's actually a nylon, but we are learning that there are uh, apparently different types of nylon fiber or vegan fiber options out there. And uh, so we'd ordered originally, it was a different type, and you were trying to dye it, and I admittedly know just enough about dyeing to get in trouble. So what was it when you were dyeing, and we've uh, coined the other one, which I loved, because um, I've spun some of it, faux angora, because we felt that it was actually even finer, like, 
uh, it just felt much more like Angora. It was even a finer fiber. But what was it doing that was weird? So when I went to go try to um, scour it or get it wet before I uh, I died, normally the faux the faux cashmere will actually take on water very easily. Um, it's very hydrophilic. And then I put this that we thought was faux cashmere in uh, in the sink with all my other fibers, you know, going along like normal. And it just sat on the top. And I kept pushing it down, and it sat on the top. I kept pushing it down, which normally is what I have to do um, a bunch with silk. And it was still sitting on the top, and the silk was all hydrated. So I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And it, it basically, I think the fiber is so fine that um, it doesn't actually take on water very well. Um, and it's, it's a really interesting phenomenon because as I was dyeing it, the colors were turning out differently on it. And then it also had a lot of blank spots where it wouldn't actually take dye, where obviously I think the problem wasn't that it was going to take dye, is that it wasn't wet. Um, so obviously when it's hydrophobic, it's just going to repel the water like rain X on your windshield. Um, but then when we were drawing, it, it took like a week to dry. It was like forever drying. But it was so soft. <laughs> it, it was. was well, I so loved it. That's why when it came in the box and mom was here, so we were like opening the box with the order of braids. And it was so pretty that since you'd said it was like not taking the water and not taking the dye well, like I was expecting it to like not look as great. And then it was so nice because I remember I had to text you and was like, did you send me the faux cashmere instead? Because it, it looked great, but the colors... I can see how now that you're spinning what is the actual faux cashmere that took the dye like we wanted it to, uh, you know, it definitely, right. you can see the difference. But I thought that was just really cool. So we will be, uh, like I said, I don't remotely understand what the difference was, but something in the actual fibers just amongst the vegan fibers. And that's one thing I try, like we do a lot of uh, custom work for people. And it's a fine line to walk between being like, we can pretty much make what you would want, you know? And then right. also being like, but <laughs> dyeing is weird. And like, I definitely know from personal experience, and you've told me dyeing yarn versus dyeing fiber, like the colors definitely, like sometimes they split, or sometimes like one color like bullies out the other color. And so. It's like we can do what you want, but you also have to have an open mind, an open heart, and know that it's going to uh, kind of, you know, do it. It's going to do it at once. So right, especially with dark colors, I find um, pretty much all of our fibers they're difficult to make dark unless I'm doing a solid one pot method with them. Well, that was my next question for you. Is like I said, I definitely am approaching this as a uh, more novice dyer. I like to sort of dye mine, and I do have a little video where I just have some paint glass pans that I use just for dyeing, where I kind of like put the dye on top, and then, you know, the, the fiber that's soaked in like a, a vinegar and water, and then do the dye and kind of maybe paint it more. But I always hear you talk about dye pots, like I got to put this in the dye pot. Could you give me a little bit more information on... Like, do you have a pot with, like, if you were doing one with three colors, would you have, like, three different pots with three different colors, or how does that work? Well, it depends on how, uh, what sort of effect we want. If um, we want something to be super deep and more of, like, an ombre, um, it's going to be easier and better color saturation. Like, remember, some of them um, we uh, spun up and then we dyed. I actually took that and soaked the solid, like, black part that ended up kind of like a dark gray. I actually soaked that part in the pot and then painted the rainbow. Um, like, if we wanted to take a braid or a set of braids and have one end be a dark color and the other end be lighter colors, I'd probably dip the darker end in the pot, let it come up to temperature, let it cool, and then um, proceed to dye the other side. Um, but... Honestly, I, the easiest way I found, if we're just doing like what we do painting, um, there's two ways. You could either keep it in the braid form, and you're going to get some nice color variation where the braid is, um, you know, where the braid overlaps, like okay. in here. And that's when you say painting, where you've got it kind of like soaked, and you go through and like paint the braid, because that's what I do. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, I have it soaked, but I just soak it um, in water or vinegar water, and then when I mix up the dyes, um, I'm using acid dyes with most of them. Some of them are procyon, 
but it's an acid um, it's an acid catalyst. So I typically use like a citric acid, and I actually mix that up with the dye. It makes the color take even better. Um, and then I then I steam it. Uh, so some some dyers have like full on steaming ovens, um, and others have like steaming. They're like, they're almost like a hot plate that you'd see at a catered event, like not sterno, but like you know an electric version, I guess, of like a sterno. Where they'll oh. actually bake their their yarn in that, but I actually use my my home oven because citric citric acid is actually what we use in canning anyway, so it's not like it's not food safe. But I have all my own dye um, dye pots and pans and other things. Um, the key is citric acid will eat away at anything but stainless steel or glass, obviously. Um, so I have to my pots are all stainless steel. And uh, I wrap it in plastic and I steam it. So that really helps. But the other thing that we've also discovered is um, if you're looking for a particular color scheme and you end up wanting to go back and do more of that, it's like almost near impossible to get an exact match. I did it on my own. Actually, Heidi um, did a custom a custom hat and oh, the vintage cowl caddy for me. <laughs> yeah, she did a custom cowl for me. I had this. Or just like hot coral oh, and yeah. like graphite silk that I had spun up, and then I dyed a bunch to try to match it, and it, and it was like neon uh, traffic cone orange, and I'm like, okay. So then I, I put it back in the pot with more pink, and I'm like, okay, let's go. Maybe I can comb it out. Maybe I can put it in the drum carter with some white and make it less intense orange. So I got it to be like. A decently hot coral, but it was still a little more orange than obviously the original. So, or then you know other colors where I've had to over dye things to try to get it to take the right color we wanted, and then I go back to do another one, and I, I go to the the second set of colors that I used, and it doesn't look quite the same as you know when there's a, a two layer of color. Yeah, no, that is definitely, we found that to be true, where we can pretty much replicate things, but yeah, like, order as much as you want, like, at that time. Like, it might, uh, we'll get it close on the second batch, but it might not always be exact. Like, this one is a, uh, a pink and red, and oh, the yeah. red, like I said, it's all marbled together, and there are, you can see, like, some redder spots in it, but I, and I've already pre-drafted that are stripped it out but I actually went back in on these particular ones and redid the red like you said because it was like the pink just like wanted to eat everything and it, but yeah. I got it like I said you can see maybe you can or cannot see we've got like this one's much more pink and this part's much more like lipstick red so I did finally get it like I wanted it but yeah I thought of you when I was doing that <laughs> but uh well, funny is I actually I find yarn easier to dye um but I'm really, um, um, I love spinning out our colors that are like pre-dyed, but I do find it's easier. I don't have to pre-draft most of the fibers if it's undyed. Yeah, no, but it does spin a little easier. <laughs> I mean, the dye process might might get your braids a little bit crunchy in, a, in, in areas, but it's not crunchy because of the fiber. It's crunchy because the citric acid really likes the fiber, and, and sometimes it'll settle there during drying. Um, no matter how much you rinse it, I've actually found it with yarn. Even no matter how much how much I uh, I rinse yarn, sometimes there are a few crunchy spots, and they rinse out as soon as your your garment or anything is made. That's true. Well, that's definitely. I just had we had somebody while you were out of uh, your studio sign up for uh, like a little later in the month for the Merino Braid of the Month Club that we're doing, and uh, I just emailed them and was like, yes, this is, we would normally get this out to you quicker, but trust me, you want Christina to do this braid and not me, because <laughs> I can do the colorways that, like, I'm comfortable with, but we really had been wanting those to be, like, special, and so, yeah, after interviewing you, anybody who's interested in that, you see why we wait till Christina is back in the studio <laughs> to do that, because she, uh, obviously knows what she's doing way better than me. So, uh, we'll leave me to the simple dye jobs, but, um, no, I know I am, uh, you see your kids milling around, and, uh, my kids, yeah, guys, we are, like, actively momming right now, so I don't know about Christina might be a nicer person than me, but I may have to go, like, yell at somebody here in a minute. So I don't have Tourette's if I start screaming off camera. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a dog, a puppy, and little children, and they're grumpy this time of day, so. Oh, yeah. 
I distracted mine with Minecraft, so I was Ooh. not quite mom of the year at the moment, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, my kids are really active, so I always hear people being like, oh my god, my kids are like sucked into all this screen time, and I'm just, I don't know, with me, I'm like, I wish my kids would go, uh, <laughs> I wish my kids would go get sucked into something, because they're always just like climbing the wall. So, like I said, I will not keep you here forever, but I know you just went on one thing, I ooh, very pretty. <laughs> one thing, uh, I know you posted this picture that we were all super jealous of, is it looked like you were somewhere like warm and tropical, and it was like, it's been raining and cloudy and horrible here in Knoxville forever. But you had this yeah. beautiful Rolag you'd made and a drop spindle. And I know we have another uh, fiber friend who I actually met through you, who also always posts all these pictures of her fiber she gets your uh, fancy fiber roll legs that she's got in, like a little bag with a spindle and she's always taking everywhere and I think I'm like inspired after y'all's pictures I want to do because you know I'm always spinning on a wheel but I think I want to get some like really nice stuff and um that I'm just making for me and like not for anybody else and I want to just put it in a bag with a drop spindle and just maybe like document being the weird drop spindle lady for like a week and, like, see oh my how that god! Goes. I did it all over the ship, and I had so many people come up to me. They're like, "What are you? That's really interesting. What are you doing?" And, and you like, you like spin your own yarn. Like, you had, never know what a no freak clue. you are till you start what spinning you yarn, and then everybody's like, "Oh my god, what are you doing?" You so uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, you were on a. I didn't know if you were on a cruise. Like, okay, so you were on a cruise. Philip and I are like that's on our list of things to do. Like, we went on a cruise when we were Lord, how old were we? We were like nineteen. <laughs> we are not nineteen anymore. So it's been a while. So it's been a long time since we've done that, and uh, we're wanting to do one of the ones like out of Charleston because that way we can drop the kids at uh, his folks' house and leave yeah. from there, and it would hopefully be affordable. So that's on the list. Actually, that was my New Year's resolution. Like everybody else is like trying to get in shape or. Like, be better people. And I'm like, my New Year's resolution is I'm going to go on a cruise. <laughs> or, yeah. I'm going to go on... Well, we kept saying we were going to do, like, the go on a second honeymoon thing. And I think that's too ambitious. So, uh, at least for right now. So, <laughs> so, that was my New Year's resolution was to go on a cruise. Last year's resolution was to carry a real purse and not, like, a diaper mommy bag thing. And I accomplished that by, like, January 2nd, and it really did make my whole year better. So I'm only making yeah. selfish New Year's resolutions from now on. Oh, my gosh. That <laughs> sounds so much better. I don't, I haven't even made one in a while, but that sounds like a good one to make. Yeah, it, no, so. go, only selfish ones. I'm, I'm not getting in shape. I've been beating that horse till it is past dead. So I think this is as good looking as I'm getting. I'm, like, as motivated as I can be right now, running on, like, yeah. mom sleep. So, uh, only selfish New Year's resolutions from here yes, on. Yes, me too. <laughs> well, I'm the other, so like I said, this was the pink and red. Like I said, this is a Valentine's Day order. So, it, it was requested to be Barbie pink and lipstick red, which are two of my favorite colors. Yeah. As, uh, and but so that's what I was spinning on camera. I also have been uh, working on, and this was my been dabbling with lock spinning. Ooh, I love if I it. I can get it. Yeah. So it's turning out really pretty. And I'm not somebody like I think in the fiber world. If anybody thinks of me, I don't think they typically think of me with the uh, the lock spinning. But it has been really fun, and I was doing it because I've had lots of requests for people wanting like how tos on lock spinning yeah. so I have this like beautiful it's like half natural white half hand dyed locks that I was doing because I'm adding to the um what am I adding to uh <laughs> the course our course on online we've it's like the how to design your own dream yarn we've got it with like a bunch of extras but because I'm lazy and I didn't want to like do a bunch of different like this one and then you buy this one you know I was like I'm just gonna charge what I charge and then I'm just gonna add like stuff to it so, like, it, once you have yeah. it, you just get the stuff. Like, you don't have to buy it again. <laughs> if you don't yeah. have it and it's something you want, then you'll be like, oh, okay, I'll go buy that. So, uh, yeah, there will not be lots of multiple little courses. I'm just going to add to that one. So, this is Stay Tuned. I was making videos for my, I guess, fiber besties who are on that course. And so, we're doing lock spinning beads. I got beads. I had, like, the world's tiniest little crochet hook. So, we're doing uh, bead spinning. And... Oh. Then this oh, was easy. the other. Amazing. So that was like regular. Oh, and uh, my oldest has to blow her nose. Yeah, you do. Go blow that. <laughs> 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 the book. And then this was uh, T 
tail spinning, which it's all like tangled up, but you know where you've got the yarn with the long like locks that come off of it. Oh, you, you tore that up? Okay, y'all go back outside. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, here we go. These were the long, like these super long locks for the tail spinning. Okay, baby, head outside. Nope. Killian? And yep, there's Killian. Okay. Hey, hi, go shut the door. You too. Hi, everybody outside. Bye! Bye. <laughs> so that's what I'm working. Like I said, this, uh, shut the door, kids. I'm so glad it's not, <laughs> it's literally rained here for a million years. So I'm really oh, happy. Yeah. Here we go. I was trying to show the, uh, the tail spinning. And like I said, it, when you're actually working with it, there you go. The locks will, you know, it's like a thinner yarn and then the locks like dangle oh, off. So yeah, I have something I exciting it. to show you. Oh. <sighs> Goodness, well, I am not sure how um, long of a video I can manage to splice with an intro and then upload due to the wonders of technology, so we should probably schedule another one of these and not ramble too much longer, because I don't want to end up with, like, a fabulous video that I can't upload due to right. size, because that we will do, do no We anything. should do a drop spindle one. That'd be super fun. That would be I'm super fun. I'm the Turkish drop spindle. That way, I've got the Turk. You've got a Turkish? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got a Turkish that has a hook on the end, so mm -hmm. that helps me. It's like my crutch. I've got the Turkish one, and I've got the fun. It's really hard to use. The little Scottish Daglin oh. one that, oh yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but I want to master it. So that might have to be my, like, spindle to tote around town. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good. Well, off to go do mom stuff, I suppose. I got to yeah. finish cleaning the kitchen. But this was fun. Thank you so much for helping me out with this. My goal, like I said, was I've got people who want to do like interviews with me like this, which is awesome. But then I'm always trying to figure out, and if you've seen from the other ones, like the best way tech-wise to go about doing this. And so I was thinking instead of doing it live to do it like recorded like this and then upload it. So... That's what we're yeah. working with. <laughs> and that way we have a split screen and it's not like recorded from my phone onto an iPad, onto a laptop, you know, so it, it kind of cuts out some of the middleman. I mean, we could totally do lives too if you wanted to in, uh, in your group because they have um, one where you can invite people. Oh, now, and then maybe we could screen record that. Oh, that, that might be a good idea. And we could have other yeah, people. Yeah, because you could, you could see it afterwards. We did it in some other groups that I'm in, so... Okay, yeah, let's do that. That that sounds yeah. great. We may, uh, like I said, it's a work in progress here. I just, this has been, I guess this should have been my New Year's resolution was I have, like I said, all these video topics kind of lined up and then the actual doing them, I'm always like, I have to wait till my skin's not broken out and the light's good and my kitchen's clean and whatever. And so that's why when you could do this today, I was just like, it's going to happen. It's probably going to be in my kitchen and um, it's just going to be what it is. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm in my front hallway. I, I moved all the <laughs> shoes out of the way, so all you can see is me and my giant picture wall. Yeah, well, that makes me feel better. Like, we have the coffee pot and, like, little kid artwork, so, uh... Art. I love the yeah. art. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, don't know. Uh, good thing we're not seeing that side of the kitchen. It's got lots and lots of stuff in it. But I don't know. I just feel like so many online businesses, everybody has like that veneer where it's like the white background and the succulent and. <laughs> That's not mom life. That's not real. That's not real. Yeah, I know. I'm like, and you have no children or like elderly parents you're taking care of or husbands or dogs or I don't know how that would work. Any of it or, or your children must know how to clean it better than mine because. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> No, sorting laundry is about as much. Mine can sort laundry and, like, wipe cabinets. They're pretty good at that. And there are pretty... Killian likes to card fiber, and she's, like, dying to spin more, and she just doesn't quite... She can do the feet or the hands, but, like, getting the feet and the hands together is just not not where she's at right now, and she gets really yeah. mad about it. <laughs> yeah. Rainley's been card... She, she actually has, like, a backlog of a bunch of uh, roll logs. <laughs> she actually... I just pulled one off the carter for her, like right before this video, and I waited. That monster was 4.2 ounces. <laughs> I was like, Rainy, like, we need, like, half this fiber. Like, we should get four ounces out of two of them. And See, I feel like that's me when I'm making, like, uh, I'm always making them, and I end up with one, like, monster bat, and then, like, the rest are normal, and I'm like, what happened with this one? So, you know, I, I fall into the category of your daughter where 
I'm like loading too much fiber on there. And then I see all these people with... Which is so great. She did a good job. It's like mostly blues so with like pops of greens and purples. It was so nice. It was rainy. Hi. No, well then, yeah, she definitely... That's how I make... That's how I make bats. And then I'm never good at taking pictures of them. I always see the people that make the bats on Instagram and they have like the pictures and they're all like folded perfect and like look great. Mine are like... <laughs> Yeah. Like, they spin well, I think, nice. I think you have to make, like, one ounce or even, like, half ounce Rolux in order to get them to, like, curl and stay curled. So then it's, like, a – then it's almost a um, viewpoint, like, deception to me because then you're expecting this, like, nice big Rolux and you get it and it's, like, tiny in your Oh, life. that's true. I didn't think about – yeah, see, I don't normally – I don't think I've ever sold Rolux. Because yeah. I bought some Rolugs online, and they ended up tiny, and I was imagining they were like what I make, but they looked like they were made on, like, a tiny blending board, and they didn't <laughs> add much fiber to each like of they them. Were, oh, that makes me feel better, then, because I always have, like, sort of spinning fiber bat insecurity with pictures, because I feel like mine are all, like, they look like my hair, like, they're just going everywhere, and then I see the other oh, people's online, and, and they're, like, perfect and folded and, like, well-behaved, and uh, I'm so that makes me feel better. So see, yeah, if you get one of my bats, it might be kind of funny looking, but it's going to have a lot of fiber in it. <laughs> yes, lots to spin. It's going to be great. Cool. Well, my dog is scratching at the door, so let me let you go. Okay. But we, let's do this again. And I want to do next time we do it, we'll do the Facebook group thing. So uh, okay. we will eventually figure out the best way to do this. But yeah, let's do the Facebook group, and that way other people can uh, hop on and, and say things. So, okay, yeah, perfect. thank you, thank you, and uh, thanks for all the dye information. What I was thinking when I was driving here, I was like, what do I want to ask Christina about? And like I yeah. said, so just from talking to you, I, and like I so said, just different ways you've referenced things, and I was like, I don't know how to do that. So, thank you. Yeah. That was what I was uh, wanting to pick your brain on today. So, we will, oh, and now you have a crown. <laughs> it's a hash oh, hand. It's a hash hand. Pretty one. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Let's see if I can figure out how to hang up. There we go. Oh, hold on. Maybe.